Okay, um, I'm recording the rest of this because I think my internet has died or something. Um, but it's definitely crashed at the very least. But I'll upload the rest of this as a part two, I guess, later. Um, for reviewing the Chinese nations and the rest of Malacca. But yeah, he's got, I think, the highest... Um, let's check one last time with GB. GB has a bit lost. Yeah, highest... Um, highest uh, sailor count in the game. Um, how many heavies do you have? 90. Okay, that's that's nutty. Porsche only has 23. How many does England have? 32. Okay. Malacca is the strongest naval power in the game. By a fairly significant amount, too. Um, but yeah. Pretty good to see. Next nation on the list is um, Yi. I love these like weird fucking names. Um, Yi looks to be pretty weak at first glance, um, only 70 income, uh, 80k max manpower, much weaker than Khmer by far, um, maybe they make up for quality or something, doesn't look it, only got 6.24 morale, I'll have a look at Khmer again, since that's, when I'm looking at these nations I'm looking at them compared to all of their neighbours, um, not just on a blank page, like my nation looks dog shit compared to Ottomans, um, and Prussia looks dog shit compared to everyone. Golden Horde looks great compared to everyone. But yeah, very weak nation. Much, much, much weaker than Khmer. He's got a lot of um, fixing to do before he'll be able to do anything. And I think the core root of this issue is that he's not dev that much. Plus, his node, this node setup sucks so fucking much. Uh, like, Wu has just half of Canton. And what have you got? You've got 40% in Chengdu. And 20% in Canton is just not that great. Jesus Christ, that Vassal Swarm is nasty. But yeah, I think Yi is definitely going to die next session. There's just not much he can fucking do at all. Um, oh, I think U, UA was a player, but yeah. Um, uh, if this Yi gets into a fight, it's going to die. It's built lots of workshops, lots of temples, a couple of manufactories, but not that many. But at the same time, he can't build them in a lot of provinces because he's built everything in them already. Um, and he's not dev them to the point where you can build more buildings in them. But he's also not really got the income to do so. A decent amount of barracks is. Um, lots of reg camps, which are cool to see. Uh, a decently <coughs> militarised nation for how weak it is. Like, this army is fairly strong, um, all things considered. Uh, you probably want a proper back row. And to not... Uh, rely on just 20k cannons, but yeah, um, I don't really want to waste too much time now, especially with my internet not existing, and, um, yeah, oh, the fuck, only 63k manpower, what the fuck these nations, and four corruption too, Ugh, 73 income in 1589 is really fucking bad, this, um, trade setup for the Chinese nations is really garbage for most of them, holy shit, this shouldn't, is but yeah, um, Wu is kind of just really far behind everyone, like, uh, not, oh, Jesus Christ, lads, please, you can't fall behind in admin tech or mil tech, that's like the golden rule of EU4 multiplayer, you fall behind in that and you die, while some people have full 28 ideas, see, 28, 24, 27, 28, 26, 26, 23, 24, 27, 23, 27, you've not even started filling it out, and so you're spending points on deming that you should be spending on filling out ideas. In exchange for this, I think he's done a pretty decent amount of conquering, but at the same time, is it really worth it? You know, to be this far behind and have a bunch of land instead? I don't think so. But yeah, um... In terms of income, buildings, he's built a few, but more to build. Uh, all the temples you could wish for, most of the workshop you'd wish for. Some military buildings, but not that many at all. Uh, it's just depressing to see. Shun. Hmm. From my first glance, I think Shun might just be the strongest nation in China. Still a lot weaker than Golden Horde. But, um, stronger than his neighbours. 100 income is not that great, but he's starting to fill out his, um, 
fourth idea group. Um, I'm not sure I'd have gone quantity. I think defensive is the play here. Um, and also, having your thoughts on fucking deserts is not the play as well. Um, Jesus Christ, it's all fucking deserts and trilands. Yeah, this is not going to be a fun war for you um, versus Golden Horde. Like, you've got all of this flatlands land that's just so easy for him to siege. Like, he'll siege half your country before you can have a fight you can actually put up with. By which point, you know, you're fucking crippled and it's going to be a fucking pain in the ass to fight. Decent amount of mercs. Do you already have mercs? Yeah, you've, you've got mercs at peacetime. Don't do that, please. Um, it's not the play. Like, uh, just delete this. You'll make more money. I promise you. See, that's five, that's five ducats of income just there. <laughs> Um, decent amount of army prof though, so maybe deleting the mercs isn't the play, I might be lying to you. Um, but at the same time, it's a waste of money, so it's up to you at the end of the day. I, I like this general though, 4461, it's a nice number. Um, not sure what these 1k spread out are supposed to be, but I guess you just haven't consolidated them into one stack yet. Um, but yeah, decently ahead in ideas, um, I mean, not decently ahead, not too far behind in ideas. Especially compared to Wu, um, but Kui and Golden Horde are so much ahead, it's painful to see. But um, yeah, all of these Chinese, except for Yi, can ally with each other. So yeah. Um, I didn't look at buildings before I started tapping to the next nation, you can tell how out of it I am. Um, most of the workshops you can build, most of the temples, uh, all the manufacturers you'd want to build, um, decent amount of barracks. And a lot of reg camps, which is I guess why he's got such a big army, 124 stomach. And when he fills quantity, it's going to be even more. But yeah. Gonna go fucking mad. Kui. Um, Kui has 87k maximum power. Yeah, Shun is the strongest Chinese, but they're in the worst position because of Golden Horde. Um, I guess Xi'an is really strong in this version of the mod or something. Yeah, it only really leaks to two places. Um, and... Kui is not, you know, utilising their caravan power here, they're just letting it be, um, and they've got, like, every single province in Xi'an, except, like, three here. But yeah, Qi, Kui, whatever, a uh, decent nation, lots of money, a uh, decent amount of manpower, but, okay, no, I lied about the money, this is really fucking poor income, 62, as a nation that's not horribly overextended, this is what you'd expect 50 years ago. Um, it's got a little bit more expanding to do, but I think the Golden Horde will get to this Manchu land before you will. Uh, do you have a truce with this? You do, yeah, yeah, you've already lost this land. Um, and he's not been allowed to go into Korea because there's going to be a Japan player next session. I'm not going to look at Japan because it's going to be fixed. Um, I'm going to look at buildings, but I'm going to make this quick. Not that many workshops worth building. Lots of temples. Uh, a couple of reg camps. Um... A few manufactories, but not many at all. Uh, hardly any barracks. Um, what about the fort situation? Upgraded forts, that's good to see. You love to see it. I give you props there, but you know you need to focus more on money and surviving. Not on just having... I don't know, I don't know what this nation has done, really. Not much. Anyway, that's going to be it. I'm sorry that this is going to be a part two to the video, instead of it being a full thing. But, um... Yeah, hopefully I'll have this fixed by next Frogscast.